through the losers. Which player is going to be able to stay in the competition and which one's going to be knocked out for good? Yep, that's all you want to know is, is where the matches are going to fall. We are going to be looking at it from Eduardo's side. Uh, quite the defensive lead from there. Incineroar and Porygon 2 going up against something a lot more offensive. That Dragapult and Togekiss combination. That said, the Porygon 2 is probably feeling pretty good about its position on the board. Uh, and this Incineroar, you know, it can buy some time with Fake Out. But then it has to start being a little bit careful. Unless he's looking to weave in something like this Burning Jealousy. Yeah, Porygon 2 is certainly going to be looking really happy right now. There's not a lot that the Dragapult can really do to apply a lot of pressure to it. Um, of course, the Incineroar can use Fake Out against that Togekiss, maybe stop a potential Yawn coming out and trying to put something asleep. Um, so Porygon 2, if it wants to set up Trick Room, is really going to look to be in a good position. But first of all, Dragapult, maybe recognizing it is not in the key position against two Pokemon it can't do a lot of damage about, switches out, meaning Alice is going to be able to bring in another Pokemon. Um, this is one of the things I like U-Turn on Dragapult just because it allows you this flexibility to change things up and I think it's wise bringing in that Ferrothorn. Togekiss is going to go for the Air Slash though, going to try and get a flinch as Incineroar also wants to leave the field going for that parting shot and just reducing some of the stats there off that Togekiss meaning that its special attack is lower, it's not going to be able to deal out as much offensive pressure as um, Alistair would have liked and you can see Eduardo bringing in the Primarina here. Interesting choice considering he knows that Ferrothorn's on the field. Certainly not what I'd expect, but maybe he feels like he's going to be in a good enough position. Once this Trick Room goes up, which it does, Alistair's answer to the Trick Room there, really kind of limited. Just fishing with the Air Slash flinch is not what you always want to be banking on. There are ways to knock it out, prevent it, stop it. Fishing for flinches is probably pretty low down on the tier list of how do I stop Trick Room going up. So that is going to be set up. I don't think there's any way to reverse it. Uh, that's immediately obvious on Alistair's side. So bringing the Ferrothorn in there, pretty good. A Pokemon that can play uh, really nicely in this Trick Room. It, it's slow by nature and it's just able to, to play around it. It's also going to appreciate being in front of the Primarina. Exactly, and Primarina going to go for that Dynamax as well as Rana wasting no time in this Trick Room environment to be able to deal out the optimal amount of max move damage it can deal. Um, and Primarina looking to be in a really strong position to apply some good damage with something like an Ice type move. Togekiss, why is he going to protect here? in front of the potential damage coming out from the Primarina as Ferrothorn goes for the Leech Seed. So therefore known to be one of these Pokemon that can just sit and stall out a game. And that's exactly what the setup it's going for. We're getting that Leech Seed off. Porygon 2, however, is going to fire off an Ice Beam doing a good chunk of damage as Primarina does follow up with a Max Hailstorm. So double Ice Attack into that Ferrothorn. Going to deal a huge amount of damage. Pixels might have just escaped me there a little bit. I'm not sure if that picked up the KO, Adam. This is one way to, to start dealing with the Ferrothorn. It's uh, throw down huge amounts of damage on it, and it's not enough to get the knockout, but it does bring Ferrothorn exceptionally low and set up that little bit of hail damage as well. Uh, so while that's going to go around doing the chip damage, I think it's important to note that Alistair set up a Leech Seed there, which is real kind of slow play uh, as things go for the, the Ferrothorn. Uh, yes, you're able to recover, and obviously that, that's certainly helpful, uh, but it takes a long time to get healthy enough to avoid these ice beams or hailstorms from knocking you out again. So it looked like the Primarina was a questionable choice bring, bringing it in once you knew the Ferrothorn had landed. But probably feeling pretty good right now, the fact it can just deal huge damage. Um, both the Togekiss and the Ferrothorn aren't going to be appreciating ice-type moves. And there's only so many that you can tank with the Follow Me before this Ferrothorn is going to get caught by one. Well, Ferrothorn going for that Iron Defense, going to boost up his defense stats um, pretty sharply. Going to make sure that it's at that plus two as Porygon 2 goes for the Ice Beam. So going to target down into that Togekiss thanks to the Follow Me. So Togekiss really sort of sacrificing itself for the Ferrothorn as Primarina follows up with a Nux, Null Up Max Hailstorm. The interesting thing though is the Iron Defenses, they're great against physical opponents, but both of Eduardo's Pokemon being special attackers are still going to put Ferrothorn in a bit of a tricky situation. Well, it actually works out quite well for Ferrothorn. You mentioned it when we were back in team preview that Ferrothorn with, with Body Press is something that people have been looking at. And obviously, uh, that's a good type matchup against the Porygon 2. You're not going to be able to do it normally. The, the Eviolite's just enough. So Ferrothorn with an Iron Defense is going to be a huge problem for this Porygon 2. But at the same time, he's taken so much damage in the early turns. I do have to question if he's going to be able to weave something uh, like that Body Press in before he just gets caught by, by Ice Beams and Max Hailstorms. Uh, so, going to be an interesting one uh, for Alistair. He is setting up kind of a lot of stuff around this Ferrothorn. Uh, he's really focused on it. it. You know, setting up the Iron Defense is, is going to be key. Um, but he's now brought a Dragapult in, in a Trick Room against 
two Pokemon with ice type attacks. That's, uh, to put it politely, not optimal <laughs> uh, for this Dragapult. No, it certainly isn't. I mean, poor Dragapult yeah, there, like you said, it's not optimal for it at all. Yeah, it, it's, I mean, it's not got the speed that it wants to, to kind of deal with. Uh, and it's got a really not great type matchup. Uh, that said, the Ferrothorn now probably putting on a little more pressure with the body press uh, after the Iron Defense. So uh, we'd have to get confirmation that it has that if it reveals that to us. Uh, but, you know, I still think Eduardo uh, is able to take good advantage of his Trick Room. That said, uh, Alistair hasn't Dynamaxed yet. No kind of Pokemon has been the focal point of his team yet. And if he picks the right Dynamax at the right time, which I think he's shaping up to do now, it could be a really good endgame for him. Indeed, I like this switch by Alistair though, making sure that the Dragapult was almost bait in a way. It comes out and Incineroar is going to be able to come in and take any ice type attacks much better than the Dragapult would have. Porygon 2 going for the Ice Beam into that Ferrothorn, just wants to try and use a little bit more of its Leech Seed um, recurring health as possible. Incineroar is however going to have to take a Max Starfall, which I think is a brilliant play there by Eduardo. You know, Max Starfall still would have done super effective damage to that Dragapult being a fairy type move and it's going to be able to still deal decent damage to any Pokemon that potentially switched in. So really wise adjustment there by Eduardo, dealing some good damage to that opposing Incineroar. It's just a very smart play to make sure that your third turn of Dynamax isn't completely wasted. If the Max Hailstorm mm. was thrown into that slot, then yeah, it would have been really underwhelming and kind of disappointing. But he plays it wise. He goes, well, I know what you've got on the team. I see the Dragapult, so Starfall's going to get a knockout there. But I think the rest of your team isn't going to be able to resist it. Something like that Incineroar that a lot of people use as like that late game pivot to open up opportunity with like a fake out into a Dynamax on the partner and such. Um, that's pretty big. And what's really big here is the Incineroar's coming in, does have access to its fake out, uh, and it can slow down something like this Primarina. So... You know, if you slow down Primarina and land an attack on Porygon 2, you know how much Ice Beam does from that earlier turn. If you feel like you can mm. withstand the Ice Beam, then even if you don't get a knockout, you're still in quite a good position. So uh, I like that pivot a lot. I think there's a lot going on for it, even though he took a lot of damage for it on the way in. Yeah, Eduardo really does have to watch out for this Ferrothorn as well. You know, something like Body Press is a good answer to the Porygon 2. You know, Alistair doesn't really have any other fighting type Pokemon on his team. He needs to be able to find a way to hit it for super effective damage. So I think going for the Switcher and bringing in the Rillaboom that will be able to take that attack much better um, is really wise for him. And actually, Eduardo pulling the double switch, going to bring in that Incineroar to go for an Intimidate across both of Alistair's Pokemon and be able to apply that fake up pressure going into the next turn as well. Um, that can just allow him the option, the options to be able to get some full position damage off where possible. And you can see that body press going into the Rillaboom My. still does a huge amount of damage thanks to the um, Island Defense boost that it got previously. And Rillaboom actually being the double target, taking some super effective damage from the U-turn on Incineroar. Wise from Alistair though, because he can reset that Intimidate and bring Fake Out later in to be able to apply that same pressure back to Eduardo. Oh, this is in a very interesting position that he hasn't Dynamax yet. And if he can get this Dragapult to play uh, with a Dynamax outside of Trick Room, it could be in a really good position. Uh, this ferrothorn has been largely left alone for a while now. Like since it uh, set up the Iron Defense, it's, it's been left alone. Both these Pokemon uh, on Eduardo's side are going to struggle to deal with it. Um, and I, I think this play is kind of working out for him. Uh, yes, he doesn't get the knockout on Rillaboom, but he gets it really close. And that's going to be huge. If he can deal with that, then he's probably feeling really good about his chances later on. Of course, we're going to see a bunch of recovery and then, of course, hail damage. There's a lot going on between turns in this game. Yeah, there certainly is. And I mean, that Ferrothorn as well, we saw it down, I believe, into the red health. And now it's managed to work its way up thanks to Leech Seed. Um, you know, the Grassy Train is going to be helping out now as well. And also those leftovers to be able to take itself back to over 50%. And that's the thing that Ferrothorn can do if you let it. It can sit on the field. It can last out a game. Um, particularly if it gets its defenses up against Pokemon here like Incineroar and Rillaboom. It's going to be a problem for Eduardo to take down. You know, Incineroar being a fire type, that sounds great. But if Ferrothorn's able to get up another Iron Defense, then any fire type moves coming out from Incineroar are going to be really dwindled in their offensive pressure. And Rillaboom can't exactly touch it either for a lot of big damage, you know, being a fellow grass type and all. I think at this point in the game, you're if you're Eduardo, you're kind of torn, right? You want to deal with this Ferrothorn. It's been sat in the field. It's been bothering you. It's got Iron Defense. But you just can't ignore the Dragapult, and that's just disrespectful to do so. And if you don't ignore it, then it, it ends up uh, causing problems like this. It's it, it's becoming Dynamax now. As soon as the Trick Room ends, he pulls the Dynamax and just says, okay, I'm going to kind of go from there and, and try and sweep. Uh, so a, a lot going on. Uh, kind of buying time with the Fake Out here uh, could just allow this, uh, ooh, this Dragapult to do a lot, especially as it doesn't have to worry about targeting now. <laughs> 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, Rillaboom going to go down um, thanks to the recoil there coming out from the Ferrothorn. Incineroar is going to have to take the Max Wormwood, is able to survive though. Um, but, you know, Incineroar now going to have its attack dropped as well. Dragapult being um, in its Dynamax form, it's going to have that extra HP as well. Incineroar going to just eat its berry, going to regain a little bit of HP going into the rest of this turn, but does oh, go for that, that Burning is. Jealousy. What a move, going to connect onto the Ferrothorn, going to be able to pick up the KO and, you know, thanks to um, Hail being stopped as well, it's going to be able to hang out on this field for extra extra longevity. I think Burning Jealousy is such a good move there that it, it, it's a safe way to pick up the, the Ferrothorn. Uh, that's, that's really, really good for him. I mean, a little bit of damage on the Dragapult is certainly going to help out too. Um, and now, I mean, a lot of pressure on this on this Dragapult. I think if the Dragapult manages to knock out the Incineroar there, this whole game is a lot different. But now, you know, Alistair's really whittled through his team. Um, you know, he's already lost a couple of his Pokemon. He is down to his last two right now. So, two versus three. I mean, it's not unwinnable, especially when you have your Dynamax. Um, but there's kind of a lot of tough Pokemon to deal with from Eduardo's side, especially... Uh, when your offensive threats are limited to just a Dragapult on Alistair's side. Exactly, and that Porygon too, having access to something like Recover can really be a thorn for Alistair to have to deal with. Um, doesn't really have a lot of super effective moves against it, you know, the Ferrothorn was setting up to go for that Body Press that would have been fantastic, but Dragapult, not going to be able to attack it with anything like a Max Phantasm. The one thing it can do though is maybe try and target Max Phantasm into the partner slot, lower the defense there of that Porygon too, and try and attack it with any other moves that will actually do some damage against it, like the Max Wormwind on the later turns. But actually gonna go straight for that Max Wormwind into the Porygon 2, nearly picks up the KO Porygon 2, able to survive on nine HP. So unless there's a double target here from Alistair, then Porygon 2 is gonna be able to deal out some good damage or maybe even try and get that Trick Room set up again. We know Eduardo's still got that Prune Arena in the back. He could utilize that for the second time in this game. But the Incineroar is going to have something to say about that. It goes for the double target. Alistair does not want Trick Room coming up once again. And Porygon 2 will be retreating back into his Pokeball. Incineroar, however, also going to do the same. Jump off the field. Go for that parting shot. But due to the fact that Eduardo now only has two Pokemon remaining, Incineroar will be rejoining us very soon. Right. Incineroar is going to come back in and land another Intimidate immediately. So it, that's a really great time to parting shot, right? And we've talked about it in previous formats where... If you can cycle through Intimidates and, and stat drops, then you can really put yourself in an advantage. Uh, that said, I love the play from, from Alistair there. I think that just double targeting the Porygon 2 is the smart and the safe play. And, and you just, you know from the get-go that you can't let Trick Room go up or you're just going to be kind of knocked, knocked out. Um, so, really smart play from him there. Um, you know, he's kind of been a little limited. He's been kind of stuck with the Max Wormwind because of the tight matchups he's been playing against. Um, you know has to be careful about throwing out ghost type moves um, but now things are a little bit kind of easier for the decision making process uh, that said this pre-marina could become quite troublesome i think if the dragapult doesn't get the knockout on pre-marina here which is certainly a stretch uh, it could be uh, a big ask uh, but the pre-marina could could swing this game right around uh, so a lot riding i think on this final turn of of dynamax dragapult Exactly. Prima Marina just going to go for a Protect though, just want to have to take a full max move if it can avoid it, wants to keep as much HP as possible, as Incineroar does go for the Fake Out into the opposing Incineroar, and Dragapult going to follow up with that Max Phantasm, quite rightly talking into the Prima Marina, as you said Adam, it is identified as definitely the biggest threat to this Dragapult, but I mean, that's an animation, or like a, a turn that we don't really see a lot, we never really see Fake Out Protect going off, because it doesn't seem to be the most optimal of plays, but... I think here there wasn't really a way to stop Dragapult going for that max move, and I think at least this way Eduardo was able to preserve some of the damage on his Prima Arena. It's been a long time since I've talked about Fake Out Protect, and you're right, it's not the most common play, <laughs> but it's definitely uh, one of the better ones in this instance, and it's, like I say, it's very rare I defend this as a play. Uh, but it's later in the game, so it makes more sense, and things are different now. When we used to talk about it, we didn't have to talk about Dynamax, and not taking the mm. full damage from Max Phantasm there, actually kind of leaves Eduardo, I guess, in the game. Uh, the Dragapult's still very healthy and the Primarina is still very low. So it's certainly going to be uh, a, a tricky one. And I do like this. I think the Phantom Force very, very wise here. Uh, just going to be able to, to play very smart around this end game. Oh, well, Primarina are going to be able to hit the Hydro Pump straight into that Incineroar and pick up the solid KO against it. I agree with you, Adam. I think the Phantom Force is very clever there, just wants to get out of the way of the field and can apply pressure on that next turn to the Primarina. Incineroar, obviously, going for a Flare Blitz, but there's there's no one to hit, so it just it sort of doesn't 
do anything, to be honest, in that particular turn. But regaining a little bit of HP as well with that grassy terrain is going to be helpful to these Pokemon. But Primarina is definitely a sort of a sitting target now for that Phantom Force to come in from behind and potentially pick up a KO. That, that Primarina is exactly what he needs to target now. He knows it's got an ice type move. He knows it's obviously got a fairy type move. Uh, you can't let your Dragapult get hit by it, right? So, smart targeting there from Eduardo to say, well, I think you're going to leave the field of Phantom Force, so let me just deal with the Incineroar so at least I can be in a 1v1 late game. But now, you know, there's definitely an offensive mismatch here, uh, and the attacking options are definitely limited for Eduardo's Incineroar. Yeah, it's Incineroar having to go in for a Fire-type move against the Dragapult. Not really dealing too much damage, being not very effective. You know, we often see some Dark-type moves on the Dragapult as well. Maybe something like a Lash Out or Darkest Lariat, but that's not the build that Eduardo has gone for. So he doesn't have access to um, that Dark-type move that he really needs to deal the damage to this Dragapult. Um, Dragapult going to go for that Dragon Darts, the little Droopy getting in on the action here in the loser's bracket. And they will... Oh, only one Droopy is needed in order to pick up the KO against that Incineroar, meaning that... Or maybe shake it up a little bit. I think shake it up would be the way I'd go with it. I, I don't know if I particularly agree with the way that that kind of all played out. If you know about the Ferrothorn as well, you've got to play a little more uh, mindful mm -hmm. of that. So certainly some, some adaptations should be coming through. I'd be very interested if things stayed the same in the four Pokemon they select. Uh, and if along those adaptations, I think a, a slight mix up in play style as well. So really looking forward to, to getting into game two and seeing if, mm -hmm. if Eduardo can keep his run alive or if Alistair's going to be able to kind of push himself through into losers round two. Well, let's take a closer look. I can already see a change occurring here. We've got Alistair leading up the Togekiss and the Rotom Wash, whereas Eduardo keeping it the same with that Primarina um, and the Porygon 2, except this time Primarina's out on the field already. That's kind of nice, setting up that early on and, and just going, okay, well, I'm not going to do the weird switch into Primarina. I'm just going to let Primarina take the field early. Uh, certainly really wise. That said, Alistair, has uh, got a Rotom on the field, which Rotom, Thunderbolt mm -hmm. into water types, that's that's its bread and butter, right? Is, is landing those and, and putting pressure on that way. So some good adaptations. Again, the options to set up Trick Room uh, is there. There's no way to stop it from Alistair's side of the field, but we've seen he can play through it and play around it. So maybe he's just gonna let it go up entirely and, and start dealing with it. Uh, that said, it looks like the Dynamax is gonna be uh, a little earlier uh, in this game. We didn't have any turn one Dynamaxes last time. And one of my favorite looking Dynamax Pokemon, Dynamax Rotom. <laughs> yeah, Rotom Wash into its Dynamax form. I was going to say, you know, Rotom could be in a great position here to maybe go for something like a Nasty Plot. But hey, why Nasty Plot? We can Dynamax and get access to those max moves. You can still deal out some really big damage. But it's going to be Dynamax apiece. Alex has got his Rotom Wash. And Eduardo is going to be bringing out his Primarina as his Dynamax Pokemon. And I actually really like this play by Eduardo here. You need to be able to give your... Prima Arena, the optimal amount of HP possible to be able to take any of those electric time moves from the opposing Rotom. Um, Porygon 2 is still looking to be in a good position to go for the Trick Room, but first of all, Prima Arena is going to have to take that Max Lightning. You can see it actually oh does over 50%. That is so much damage, and it also then sets up that electric terrain as well. Um, so just really great, powerful, offensive start there from Alistair. Togekiss going to go for that air slash once again. Alistair going to be hoping that the Porygon 2 is going to be unable to move. This Primarina goes for that max Starfall. So going to change up the terrain once again, targeting down into that Rotom, and in retaliation does deal as well a huge amount of damage, taking it to below 50%. The speed tiers are going to be so critical going into this next turn. Can Porygon 2 move? Oh no, it does actually flinch. Oh, that's a really bad turn for Eduardo in that he doesn't get Trick Room up. Yes, getting damage down on the Rotom is huge. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of the same turn over for him again, right? He needs to, he wants to deal damage. And I think the idea there was, uh, okay, well, if I if I get it to under half with the first Starfall, then Trick Room goes up, then mm -hmm. I'm able to, to get it knocked out with the second Starfall. Both yeah, we'll kind of running back thing. at that turn one. Oh. Yeah, they certainly are. We're going to see the same thing play out. And, you know, it literally happened the same way. Trick Room didn't go off. The only thing that was different was Primarina wisely did go for that Max Guard. Otherwise, that would have been KO'd by the electric, um, by the Max Lightning. I mean, that had to be done. He had to keep it safe. And you see him in the menu, maybe mulling over a switch out there. It's so tough to justify giving up your third turn of Dynamax. But when you know for a fact that a Max Lightning is going to be able to knock you out, it's probably better to at least <laughs> have a Pokemon for later than not at all. This Porygon 2 must be getting really frustrated. It really just wants to try and deal as much damage as possible, or set up as much damage as possible with the Trick Room. That's all it wants to do. And 
it's just not able to. And while I kind of uh, bemoaned in game number one how I don't think that air slash is a way to stop Trick Room, I am being proved <laughs> wrong here. Yeah, I think you spoke too soon there, Adam. The Pre Marina as well um, has been KO'd by that Roton Wash. Going to be able to go for another Max Lightning, change the terrain up as well, and pick up that critical KO. So Eduardo was trying to go for that second Max Guard. I don't blame him for doing that. You know, you have the speed disadvantage. The only thing you could really do in that situation was either make a hard switch or try and get that. Um, consecutive max guard in order to preserve your pre-marina but porygon 2 hit by another air slash not even going to go for trick room anymore going to reap the benefits of that electric train and go for the thunderbolt into that togekiss it actually does so much damage nearly picking up the ko putting togekiss in a really precarious position going forward you know roton wash looking to be in a really strong position but i believe the dynamax turns are now over um so togekiss sitting in a position where it can go for some redirection but it will not be able to redirect for long with that low hp there's only so much you can redirect with a Terrakion as well. I mean, I don't foresee the Terrakion <laughs> firing a close combat out when Rock Slide is, is right there to be pressed. And I kind of like Eduardo there saying, you know what, maybe it's too late for the Trick Room. If I can get damage down now, then I might be able to kind of bring in that that uh, Terrakion and clean up. So the Ferrothorn coming in, certainly uh, an interesting one here. Uh, if he can get a flinch in return on this Rotom, this could be a huge turn for him. There it is! Ooh. And uh, this is a, a really kind of big momentum swing, I think, for Eduardo. Yeah, Paragon 2 must be really happy that it's sitting on the field right next to that Terrakion. Um, being able to get the flinch off on that Rotom allows Paragon 2 the opportunity to be able to get that recover off. So Paragon 2, you know, it's really mad for in the beginning of the game constantly being flinched, but it's now in a good position where it can, it can pick up a KO against that Rotom, it can deal some good damage, it can go for the Ice Beams into the Ferrothorn. Rotom, however, gonna wisely protect. I think it knows that it doesn't want to take any more damage from this Rock Slide. Terrakion going in for, of course, gonna hit the Protect. Um, but will it go into that Ferrothorn? Yes, it does manage to connect, but it's really not dealing a lot of damage. I think the main thing here is to try and get those flinches and stop any Leech Seeds being set up. Um, or even the Iron Defenses. You know, Ferrothorn, a good counter to that Porygon too. Ferrothorn oh is also God. going to flinch. There are so many flinches in this game, Adam. They're happening left, right, and center. This, this game has had a flinch every turn. That is something that people are not big fans of, but Rock Slide and uh, Air Slash do that. So uh, this game is, is going to be uh, really close, I think, because of this early mix-up. A uh, very smart play, though, from Eduardo. I want to touch on something a little more niche. It does look like a really obvious choice to throw close combat at the uh, Ferrothorn, but he's thinking ahead. He's thinking, no, I want to keep my Focus Sash intact. If I hit it, I'm going to get caught with the Iron Barbs, and I'm not going to have mm. that Focus Sash. So really smart for him there to, to keep that intact. And now you look at the way the board is set up. Rock Slide is always going to be hitting the partner of Ferrothorn really, really well. It being a Togekiss, an Incineroar, or the Rotom that's already really low. Uh, Rock Slide is definitely the preferred choice for a few turns here. Yeah, I love Rock Slide being the choice here, because not only, as you said, it can deal really good damage, but also get the flinch chances, but being sort of a spread move, if Alistair wants to make those switches, he always will still have to take some damage, as long as Rock Slide is able to connect. That's why I like the Incineroar switching in here. You're able to get that Intimidate off and apply pressure with a Fake Out to maybe break the Focus Sash on that Terrakion. Incineroar, however, they're going to jump in, so, you know, what one player can do, the other one can do as well. Um, Incineroar going to join the field and apply that Intimidate on both of Alistair's Pokemon and keep that fake out pressure going into that next turn just in case Porygon 2 needs a little bit more assistance. Incineroar though on Alistair's side going to target down into what was the Terrakion so Incineroar's not going to mind that at all as Porygon 2 follows up with that Ice Beam. We know it can deal a decent amount of damage to that Ferrothorn but you know there's there's no extra effects going on here. The Ferrothorn is able to get that Leech Seed into the Porygon 2 and will once again be in a position where it can start regaining a little bit of HP. But as Alistair with that Ferrothorn, you have to worry about the fire type moves that come out from the Incineroar. You know, we saw them in game one. Alistair will be privy to them anyway. Um, so he has to make sure that he plays around as well and removes the Incineroar threat from the field. Eduardo's being very, very smart with this Terrakion and keeping it really as his, his big focal point of his team. Uh, keeping it with the Focus Sash is absolutely huge. And seeing the potential fake out there, just getting it out, really, really smart. I like the way he's playing with it. I think it's a Pokemon that not enough players have experimented with recently. And so I'll be curious to see if he can kind of close out the game with it. Uh, and a little bit of a mix up from Alistair. I think he wants to, to save some things for later. Uh, but this Porygon staying on the field certainly uh, something I was expecting to, to maybe look at a switch at least. Oh, and a slight change up there from the Porygon 2. Going to be able to go for that Thunderbolt and actually gets the paralysis on that opposing Incineroar. Just another thing that Alistair has to bear in mind that could potentially stop his Pokemon from moving at all. 
Rotom able to come into the field and get that little bit of recovery, just putting it into a better position where it's not going to potentially be KO'd by something like the Porygon 2 um, with one of its moves. It needs to be able to deal out some good damage. And, you know, Rotom's in a position where it could go for something like a Hydro Pump into that opposing Incineroar and deal some really good damage. The Rotom is something I think he wants to, to deal with as soon as possible, and that's kind of the game plan here. That said, the Hydro Pump's heading towards the Porygon 2, which is something uh, a little bit different, I think. Yeah, particularly as it did hit its target, it might have been an opportune moment to target down into that Incineroar, but we'll never know at this stage. Por um, Porygon 2 is able to connect onto the Rotom and will be able to um, pick up the KO against it. The Incineroar, though, on Eduardo's side is going to be able to go for that passing shot. And I, I like these plays by Eduardo where he is switching up his ball position, making sure he identifies which Pokemon he maybe needs at the end in order to close out this game. And I think it's quite a critical turn to be able to bring that Terrakion back in. You don't have to worry about any fake out. You don't have to worry about um, any Intimidate. And to be honest, you don't have to worry about that Incineroar when it gets paralyzed as well. It was really a free moment for Eduardo to bring his Terrakion in. This is a great moment for him to go for something like that Rock Slide. Um, no matter what Pokemon comes in here, it's gonna be able to deal some good damage to that Incineroar and deal some chip to the opposing Pokemon. There's a lot that's really working now for Eduardo. The first few turns, disastrous, right? Two flinches, no trick room. Mm. But the way he's managed to swing the momentum back has been absolutely key. Um, you know, he did lose his pre-marina early doors, and, and that seemed to be a, a big problem. Uh, but right now, I mean, the Ferrothorn probably has to be a bit careful, um, just because it's, it's already low, and it means that the close combat is able to start tidying it up. It's also about to lose its Leech Seed recovery because of the Porygon switching around. So... Um, Really kind of smart play, I think, here from Eduardo. Really heads up uh, with a limited squad for the duration of the game. Exactly, and bringing that Incineroar in gets that Intimidate off to so if Terrakion does lose its Focus Sash, which is prepared to do, you know, going into that Ferrothorn you mentioned, of course, it's going to be able to take the chip from the Iron Barbs. Um, it just means that any additional damage going into that Terrakion slot isn't going to be as worrying as possible, you know, with the drops as well. That's something Terrakion has to be concerned about. But Incineroar is buddy helping it out for sure. Incineroar, though, on Alistair's side, is going to be going for that U-turn. So Alistair playing the same game here as Eduardo and preserving that Incineroar. We already know, we see it so many times, how critical it can be in a game being able to intimidate. And with the Terrakion on the field, as Alistair, you need to be able to find a way to intimidate it and stop dealing out damage, particularly when you've got a Togekiss on, like, as your partner Pokemon. Already at such low HP, one Rock Slide. I don't think even an Intimidate here is going to help it out. Togekiss will go down if Rock Slide's able to connect. Honestly, a Rock Slide here is probably just going to be able to seal up the game. All he has to do is watch out for the Fake Out um, on the opposing Incineroar. So if Alistair's Incineroar, you know, wants to Fake him out, that's fine. Just buy a turn. Uh, don't let him do it right now. Um, you know... And then kind of go from there with the rock sides. Uh, it doesn't look like that's uh, what Eduardo went for. Just kind of going for it. Uh, yeah, as uh, Alistair just says, you know what? Let's move on. Let's go to game three. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see Dragapult jump back into game number three. But why wait? Let's jump into the action. Remember, the winner of this game will be able to stay in the competition. And the loser will regrettably be out of the running. Alistair is going to be bringing his Rotom Wash paired up with that Togekiss and Eduardo bringing the Porygon 2 and the Primarina. So very similarly to, to Game 2, Adam. They've gone back to Game 2. I think Eduardo's probably feeling pretty good about that. Uh, he, you know, does get to kind of play knowing that it just worked out for him, uh, which is certainly going to help. Uh, obviously, I imagine we're going to see the same first turn with the Double Dynamax. Uh, but then it, it comes down to the Togekiss, right? And it, will the Togekiss get its flinches? Yes, no, maybe, you know, it... It's relying on that to stop the Trick Room, which is certainly uh, not the preferred option. So while I, I said that and it worked very well in game number two, uh, if this strategy executes well, I think Eduardo could put himself in a, a really kind of early lead uh, if he gets Trick Room up this turn and then is able to, to land the Starfall as well. Yeah, it could be a really strong roll of the dice here if these trainers want to go for the same thing. But there's only one Dynamax this time, going to be the Primarina. As Alistair's Togekiss decides to go for that Follow Me, going to redirect in any attacks and leave Rotom to go for that nasty plot. So Rotom this time actually wanting to make sure that it gets its special attack boosted up by two stages in order to deal out the most offensive damage. And if Rotom maybe wants to Dynamax on the next turn, that is going to be something Primarina really, really has to worry about. Togekiss able to survive the Max Staff, although of course the um, Mr. Terrain will now be in effect as well. So any grounded Pokemon won't get any of those secondary effects that we saw come into play a little bit in that game too. And Porygon 2 safe to go for that Trick Room as there was no Air Slash. But I think the critical thing here is Togekiss was able to survive. It's going to be able to redirect away one attack. It will, but also it, it may just have to deal with something from the 
from the Porygon, and I am interested in Eduardo's choice here. Um, obviously, things are a little bit different in this turn. Alistair uh, did decide to, to Dynamax turn one last game, and this time he saved it for turn two. Why? To weave in that nasty plot. He knew how much damage it did when he just went Max Lightning right off the bat, and now he's kind of in a really good position. Uh, there's nothing immediately threatening this Rotom, and as long as he can land one of those Max Lightnings in the next three turns, uh, obviously Eduardo's going to be able to buy a little bit of time now, but as long as he can land one, he's going to be able to deal with Primarina. Yeah, I really like this play here by Eduardo. Um, protecting up the um, Primarina with the Max Guard as it knows it's going to be the target um, from that Rotom, but as well, Alistair playing really well to protect the Togekiss. Um, you know, Primarina really was very likely going to be going for that Max Guard there, but Porygon 2, maybe going for something like the Ice Beam into that Togekiss, would have been able to pick up the KO, and even if Togekiss, um, sorry, even if the Porygon 2 had targeted into the Rotom, what's it really going to do to the Rotom? This is the turn, though, for Togekiss to really sort of sacrifice itself for that Rotom wash. It goes for that Follow Me, as Porygon 2 going to be able to go for that Thunderbolt, using the terrain as well, just for that extra damage that I don't think really was needed to pick up the KO against Togekiss, leaving Rotom wash in a little bit more of a vulnerable spot. Primarina, however, going to go for that max Starfall. We saw this in game one. It did just over 50%, so Rotom will be able to survive this. And Rotom now in a position to be able to fire off a powerful max lining. Will be able to go onto this Primarina with a little bit of chip it's already got. It is enough to pick up a solid KO. So once again, Rotom able to pick up the KO against that Primarina. But I think the thing that's different in this game three is Trick Room is now up. This is an area where Porygon 2 can still apply a lot of pressure. It's certainly a, an interesting one to see Porygon 2 as probably the best offensive threat uh, for a little bit here. Uh, Incineroar <laughs> definitely has to come in now just because you're playing in the Trick Room. And I think Eduardo wants to slow the game down a lot. That was a lot of Pokemon being exchanged there. Uh, obviously Togekiss for the Primarina is definitely in favor of Alistair. That's a support Pokemon in favor of one of the offensive kind of sweeper Pokemon as they're sometimes known uh, from, from Eduardo. So. A very good trade there if you're Alistair, I think, uh, but he just has to be a little bit careful of the end game. Uh, I do worry that maybe the end game's going to be a little bit harder without that Togekiss, uh, particularly if his choices are the same as last game. If he has the, the Dragapult, I think this end game's super different and su surprisingly uh, very advantageous for him. But Eduardo just being really smart there, um, just keeping things going. There is the Ferrothorn again, uh, so I imagine the team selection is going to be the same and. Uh, this Porygon could actually do a lot in the last few turns of Trick Room. Yeah, I mean, you saw Eduardo really considering, did he want to bring the Incineroar or the Terrakion onto this? Because you could predict that Alistair was going to bring in that Ferrothorn, you know, Trick Room's up. It's a Pokemon that operates well in Trick Room. And both of the Pokemon that Eduardo has there can apply a lot of pressure to that Ferrothorn. But you have to remember, there's still a Rotom here in the field. Something like a Max Geyser is going to pick up the KO against that. Um, Incineroar and you know Terrakion's not going to appreciate it either but with the Focus Slash it does give Terrakion a little bit more longevity so that could be a Pokemon Eduardo wants to keep maybe for more of the end game situation if Terrakion needs to be in a position to pick up some critical KOs. Ferrothorn however going to leave the field as quickly as it joins doesn't want to face down against that Incineroar and resets into Intimidate and brings in an Intimidate user of Alistair's own and I do like this play here by Alistair he's slowing the game down a little bit more and being able to apply a little bit more pressure to that Incineroar. Rotom, however, gonna go for the Max Guard. So Alistair maybe is trying to play out some of these Trick Room turns as well so that his Rotom can be in a more optimal position. Burning Jealousy is gonna catch the Incineroar for a little bit of chip damage on the way in. And I think that was even a critical hit there. So really Incineroar coming in very nicely for free here. I'm I'm interested by that turn. I, I'm surprisingly curious at Alistair's play. Uh, you had your last turn of Dynamax, you had a, a pretty nice matchup there for your Rotom. You, I mean, he obviously has the information very specifically on how much the Porygon 2 did to him uh, before, but based on the earlier one, it looked like the Porygon 2 wasn't going to be able to pick up a knockout there, just in, in my humble opinion. And he just kind of takes his foot off the gas there and says, okay, well, we'll slow it down, um, we'll play with Rotom out of its Dynamax. Uh, but I think just targeting that Incineroar was was pretty free to, to go for and, and I'm very curious um, as to how this this turn plays out. Well, Terrakion jumping in straight in the face of a Hydro Pump. Thankfully, it does have that Focus Sash. They're going to be able to hang on with that one HP as the Trick Room does end. So now we're in it, that kind of situation again where Porygon 2, not going to be the most optimal Pokemon in the speed environment, but still has a lot of HP. And as you mentioned, the, it was interesting that the Rotom actually didn't go for an offensive move on that last max turn because it could easily have dealt out so much big damage. Remember, it has got that nasty plot boost. Um, so if you are Alistair at this opportunity, you might want to try and get 
that Porygon 2 away from the field as quickly as possible. It's a really nice turn to bring in the, the Terrakion though. You get that in as, as Trick Room expires. Yes, you're brought down to your Focus Sash. Yeah, you have to be careful of your Ferrothorn. But as long as you don't close combat the Ferrothorn at any point, you're probably feeling <laughs> fine. Uh, if you rock slide it and grab a bunch of flinches as well, you're probably feeling pretty good. So uh, it looks like Alistair's going to try and force some more Intimidates from it. Um, but Eduardo definitely in a position to try and kind of catch up a little bit here with some rock slides and with some follow-up attacks from this Polygon. Um, I think that was a little bit of the commentator's curse there, Adam. You said as long yep. as he doesn't close combat at Ferrothorn. And that's exactly what's happened in this turn. Does manage, of course, to deal some really good damage to the Ferrothorn. And that might be something that can help him out later on. Particularly as we know how much Ice Beam can deal to that Ferrothorn. It does do decent that sort of balance between a quarter and a third kind of damage. Um, but it is at the expense of losing that Terrakion. And we saw it put in so much work in game two. Those rock slides would have been phenomenal. Particularly with the Rotom and the... Uh, at such low health, health and the Incineroar there as well on the field. Those are two Pokemon that don't want to be taking the rock slides at this point in this game. Incineroar going to jump back in though for Eduardo, apply that little bit of Intimidate, but I think the critical thing here is going to be having that fake out. You can stop the Rotom Wash from dealing out big damage, you know, something like the Hydro Pump's easily going to pick up the KO against Incineroar, um, and of course Porygon 2 doesn't want to take that damage either, and I wouldn't be surprised to see Porygon 2 maybe just going straight on the offensive here and trying to pick up KOs against that Ferrothorn before it's able to set up. Yeah, I mean, the Ferrothorn is a, a very kind of drawn out late game win condition, uh, which is, is going to be an interesting one. Uh, Alistair switching things around, um, bringing in that nice healthy in Incineroar. I, I like this. I think it's, it's probably what you need. Uh, Eduardo's got a long way to go. This game is going to be real slow uh, as we get towards the end of it. Uh, I hate to say it, Lou, and I know we're always the ones who, who get this, uh, but, but can you foresee uh, the, the Porygon versus uh, Ferrothorn endgame? <laughs> I can foresee it, but until it happens, I'm, I'm going to just keep my fingers crossed there's going to be some big damage coming out from these players. But at the end of the day, this is game three. They do have to make sure that every single turn counts. They want to make sure that at the end of each turn, they're in the ball position, that not only will put them in a great position, but will also just keep them in the match at this point. And I think Incineroar is going to be key to this situation at the moment. You know, being able to get that chip damage with Fake Out, applying the offensive pressure um, with the fire type moves, if you are Eduardo, being able to try and pick up KOs against that Ferrothorn, can put him in a great position but Porygon 2 you know we can't rule it out as an offensive pressure here almost picking up the KO against the Porygon as well um against the Ferrothorn but Ferrothorn able to hang on and go for that leech seed so once again as you mentioned Ferrothorn here is that kind of long game stall out situation where it just it keeps itself on the field uses that leech seed goes for that protect uses those leftovers and if Eduardo is not able to counteract against it it's going to cause him a few problems but I feel like as long as he's got that Incineroar in reasonable health and he's able to apply pressure with it he can start working his way through Alistair's team they're all dwindling in their HP so as long as Eduardo keeps it calm he can apply a lot of offensive pressure and that's going to be key is making sure he can weave in a burning jealousy or, or flare blitz on this Ferrothorn right I mean it, you know if you think it's going to protect this turn uh Alistair can't kind of rotate through his Pokemon quick enough to, to get that Incineroar back in so that every time Ferrothorn's not able to protect, uh, Incineroar's able to, to fake out. So uh, a lot going into the protects here from the, uh, the Ferrothorn. Yeah, and I mean, that's not something we see every day. It's an earthquake on an Incineroar either. Um, doing a little bit of damage to both those opposing Pokemon, but not really putting them in any position to be concerned about if you're Eduardo. Um, going for that Burning Jealousy once again, connecting to the Protect, of course, on that Ferrothorn, and dealing a little bit of chip to the Incineroar. But really interesting seeing that Earthquake come out. Of course, that's not a move that Alistair can use every single turn. Ferrothorn isn't going to want to take any damage from that either. Um, so you have to make sure that you're timing it for a turn when you can Protect. It's going to become kind of formulaic right like you protect an earthquake or you uh, i guess try and leech seed again and something else uh, i do think now the time could finally be up for this ferrothorn in that it's not able to to safely leech seed um but that said i mean the rotom is still available in the back and if he can play around that then there is a win condition here for alistair he just needs to be very slow about it very very smart i think is is going to be the the key way to do it um landing as many leech seeds as possible is is essential here uh, because of the way the Porygon 2 is, is set up to to win the game. So you need the Leech Seed on the other Pokemon as well. But uh, this one could be drawn out. I mean, both trainers uh, playing it very, very slow. Uh, and just don't want to get knocked out this tournament to, to being over-aggressive. Incineroar on Alistair's side is going to go for that Flare Blitz, targeting down into the Porygon 2. 
just trying to windle away at its HP, but of course Porygon 2 does have access to that recover, um, so if you're not able to pick up KOs against it, it's going to be able to hang out on the field, oh. but Rotom will not be able to join the party, it takes the Thunderbolt directly from that Porygon 2, and will be returning to its Pokeball, as Incineroar follows up with that Burning Jealousy, once again just chipping away at this Incineroar, but I think that's the critical thing that Eduardo is doing here, you know, Alistair's playing really defensively with a lot of switches, and Eduardo's really able to capitalise on that, still dealing damage, even if it's just chip damage at these stages, is constantly whittling away at Alistair's Pokemon, and even when Eduardo is making those switches, he tends to time it when Alistair does as well, so those turns are almost a stalemate, Eduardo isn't the one taking the damage, and I think as the clock keeps ticking down, this is where Eduardo can kind of have that rolling boulder of damage as it progresses through the game. I don't see many ways for Alistair to get back into it after that that switch. Uh, calling the Rotom coming in, landing the Thunderbolt on it and getting the knockout is huge. Uh, Alistair looks like he's going to be able to try and fight back though. Um, but, I mean, the Incineroar over on Alistair's side is very low. We've not seen any berries going off or anything. Uh, the Burning Jealousy will pick up the knockout on Ferrothorn and, and I, you have to imagine that uh, there's only so much uh, that this Incineroar matchup can do. Losing that Rotom absolutely huge for Alistair. I think he was hoping mm -hmm. it would be able to take like an Ice Beam Burning Jealousy on the way in, uh, but mixing it up to the Thunderbolt, really, really smart there from Eduardo, uh, knocking the Rotom out on the way in, and, and that looks like it's going to put him uh, into the next round. It, it's going to be a, a lot to ask of this Incineroar with its Earthquake. Oh! oh my! Oh my goodness. I mean, that was a way back in. We know that Incineroar has the Earthquake, and if that had been something like a critical hit, that would have been amazing. It would for Alistair to be able to pick a KO up against that Incineroar, but to no avail, Eduardo does go for the Incineroar and will be able Ooh. to pick up the KO. I mean, Eduardo has been able to be the winner of this set and will advance in the competition, but what an amazing endgame situation for Alistair just to reveal that Earthquake so late on.